Good evening, everybody. Catherine says we're on. It's time. Okay, it's time. Heartland Community School District Board of Education special meeting. So November 7, 515, and we do have a quorum. I believe we have Joe that's uh, up tonight and also Jay, those two. But uh, we're in good shape, so uh, for the quorum, right, Catherine? Yes, sir. Okay, and so uh, should be a fairly short meeting tonight. Uh, first thing uh, is we'll call the meeting to order, and second, uh, we'll uh, put the agenda before the board to see if you have any questions or comments about that. Okay, could we have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. So moved by Monty. Second. Second by Greg. And so that's approved. Uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed, no. <laughs> okay. Uh, next is the action items, and the, the first item on here is the resolution directing the advertisement for sale, approval, approving of electronic bidding procedures, and the approving of the official statement. I wanted to uh, mention something to the board. Is uh, in a way I uh, misspoke the last couple weeks uh, in the fact that I uh, looked over to uh, Brian and I said, uh, "This is just a check the box type thing." And of course he said yes. And uh, so I wanted to explain. We took a little time today, and, and uh, Dr. Burnett and uh, Catherine and Brian explained some of these procedures to us. Uh, but it's easy to get um, to get lost in all the details and the professionals that are telling us what to do. But it's really important that it's been brought to our attention for the, everyone on the board to really understand what we're doing every time we do a vote. And uh, I, I haven't always known that, but I, I've uh, endeavored to realize that better. Uh, what it goes back to is back uh, about a year ago, we, uh, Dr. Barnett and the, the administration met with the teachers and, and people from the community and school board facility people and decided that we needed to update the infrastructure and the buildings around here and uh, it was put out that we need to spend about 32 million dollars to do that and that's a little vague because until the architects get done and the construction manager we won't know the exact number but it'll be somewhere in that neighborhood and so consequently we took a vote in September and there was two parts to it one was on the front page is should we spend uh, the number I've got here is uh, 22.9 million in this endeavor, endeavor, and we call that the general obligation. Mm -hmm. uh, what you want to think about that is it's who's going to pay for it. It's property tax, and it's the uh, people of our of our uh, county that's going to have to pay that back. Um, and so that is one box that we always want to talk about when we're making actions and and that type thing. Uh, the second thing on the back page was to renew something that's called the Revenue Purpose Statement. And that part of it is actually uh, not paid back by the individual people of our county, but is paid back through sales tax. And so it's similar in a way that we still have to go out and borrow the money, but every year the government, uh, Iowa, state of Iowa, gives us some money, approximately $1.5 million, that we can use, and uh, it's the intention to use that over a period of years to pay back whatever we loan from that. Um, and so it's really important to know that what we're doing, last week what we did in essence is that we decided uh, after the experts uh, informed us that we could go up to about $16 million on that side of things. Um, that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the 32, uh, t uh, exactly the 32 million dollars, but it's part of it. Yeah, essentially, the 16 million, what it does, and I'm going to oversimplify it, but mm -hmm. essentially what that does is it allows us to get the other 9.1 million to get to the 32 million. It also allows us to, as part of our financing plan, there's remaining debt on the primary to bring it all under one premise and then if you add those up to 9.1 and, and approximately 5 it comes to 14 well it's stated at 16 the reason that they they suggest we do that is to, to have the difference there is is um, 
organically over the next couple of years, we're actually going to get some reserves just because our, our payments are low till, till we start making these payments. So we're, I'm going to use the word organically, our reserves in, in, in the, uh, the save fund are going to go up. So what it does, it allows us the, the flexibility that, and I'm going to use the word potentially, <laughs> we could actually maybe not have to borrow quite as much of the general obligation. So they, they suggest if you do have the chance that you're going to have some reserves, go ahead and raise that up because then that will lower the property tax portion of it. But it also, the other thing it does is it allows <coughs> us, um, by, by having a financing plan where it's all brought in, under one roof, mm -hmm. it, it allows us to make sure we can keep our promise on the two dollars and thirty-three cents on the property tax side. And so, of the two boxes, the the first box, uh, which is the property tax box, the the citizens of the county gave uh, us the authority to go ahead and use that money and borrow that money as we need it. The other part of it, we actually just have authority, and the school board itself can decide how those funds should be, how, how much those funds should be in, in concert with professionals that, that indicate to us how much is reasonable and Brian's very much uh, in tune with that. And, and honestly Jim, we don't know the answer to that second yeah. question. We'll know as we go farther down right. the road. Right. So we want everyone to know, I was going to show you this, this is a, a mortgage that goes back to I think 1938 or so. <laughs> it was on a property that I bought uh, and it was a, a half a page and they put the payments on the back. Uh, but today this stuff is so complicated. It takes a whole page now? Yes. <laughs> I know the last time I did mine it was 150 pages or 200 and there was two, three lawyers and bankers and everybody sitting there. And so the tendency is for this to be very complicated when it, is, it really doesn't need to be. You know, usually when you go to loan money, you go to the bank and you say, well, will you loan me money or a couple of them and ask them. But in this case, we are going out to bid for it. And so they're coming to us saying, we want to loan you money because our... Uh, because we're a school, it's very desirable, and there's competition, and so they can come to us and give us the best rate uh, that they can do. And so that's what we're doing tonight is we are on this part of the box that has to do with property tax, and we are going to uh, put out for bid, uh, let's see, what is the amount on here? Was it $10 million? Is that right? Yeah, $10 million, uh, And so they will loan the school district $10 million dollars on the property side, tax side of things. Yeah, this this is the first installment of the, yeah. the property tax side. Yeah. And what was the reason, uh, why not go for the whole 22.9? You, you actually give yourself more flexibility in, in not only rates, but in um, if you go over a certain amount, I see. It, it, there's a lot more uh, mm -hmm. hoops you have to jump through and such, so they try to yeah. do it. Over a period of time. But they realize that rates are, are they probably going to go up the yeah. next next yeah. time they that's, do it. And, that's built and they into have that, that factored into yes, it. Yes, that's built into the assumptions. Mm -hmm. So we rely on them, but yet we want to question, and they're not always right. So it's it's a good idea to question. But I'm sure they built that. that into the assumptions. Mm -hmm. So anyway, before uh, so what this is going to do is uh, it says here first of all there's an advertisement for sale. You know, really, you know, some of the words they use make you kind of scratch your head because it's an advertisement for somebody to loan us money. We're not selling. Uh, they're loaning us money. The other part of it is approving the electronic bidding procedures, and that's part of this, too, resolution and the approval of the official statement. But this is really what is called the, uh, it's the bid package that all the bidders will get and uh, I think Brian had sent us a package of this here last Friday, but this is really what they'll bid on, and hopefully we'll get the best rate we can. Because it's a security, and it's offered to the public, it's offered publicly, right. it has to be done in this form. Right. Yep. And any bank or any financial institution that wants can bid on this, and it's, that will happen on December, or excuse me, November 21st, is that right? One o'clock? That sounds right. I don't have the timeline. Okay, it'll be a public bid opening where anybody can come in and see what numbers that they give us, and then uh, somebody will have to sit down and say, "Well, this is the best bid, and who this is who we're going to we're going to loan the money from." 
And then that evening, I think we have another board meeting. There's not one on the 14th, by the way, <laughs> um, which, I mean, which I was wrong about. So, regular meeting on the 21st. Right. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Accept the proposal. Yes. Questions or discussion? I just wanted to. Uh, stated very well, Jim. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I'm trying to get around and understand this. Any other questions about it or discussion or concerns? Like I say, the, uh, Dr. Burnett and Brian was very helpful because I didn't understand it very well. And now, too, I think it helped us to understand yeah. what we're actually doing. Learned a lot. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Can we have a motion then uh, concerning this resolution? So moved. So moved by Al, seconded. Second. Second by Joni. And so we get to do a roll call vote tonight. Okay. No, yeah. we, don't we don't have, have to. We don't have to. You can. Oh, okay. If you'd like. That's yeah. okay. Yeah, best right. said you You're can. You're the boss. You can do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm a funny. I think it makes sense in one this big. <laughs> <laughs> think we should? She said sure. I either one or one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Greg Blatt, how do you vote? Aye. And Monty Schechinger? Aye. And Joni Larson? Aye. And Al Hersberg? Okay, thank you. I do, I do get one wrong. Yeah. <laughs> He's trying to get two votes for the person. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, I think there's more, more people in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and I. 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 Okay, yeah. okay. So the motion has carried. Right? Did you vote? You're vote. I don't. Do I vote? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I vote aye. <laughs> okay. Very good. Got action item one accomplished. The second one thing on this uh, agenda is approval of legislative priorities. And the committee was Joni, Al, and was it Joe? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Well, like I stated earlier on this, it's it. When you go to the convention, there's a whole list of items that we need to narrow down on what we think is the top ones, prioritize them. And I think we've decided that um, the preschool funding needs to be at the top, and mental health, and the SSA funding, which is the student's supplemental aid. And we also feel that teacher recruitment is a hot topic right now um, with the shortage of teachers and what they're going to do for requirements for potential teachers, what the requirements are going to be. So, um, like I said, there's lots and lots of good topics to discuss, but I think we feel those are the priority ones. And every school in Iowa presents their priorities, and there will be a lot of schools will have the same as ours because those are hot, hot items. It will be discussed at Delegate Assembly next week and voted on, and then the legislature then will get what the Iowa Association of School Boards said, here are the top, of all the school districts in Iowa, here are the top priority items that we want you to And Joe for. will be the one attending, mm -hmm. yeah, attending and, and he has, um, yeah, every school has one delegate and Joe is, will be the delegate representing this board. Mm -hmm. And what's the date of that meeting? Is that the 17th? 17th? Um, what day? Wednesday. Yeah. Uh, oh, it'll be the 16th. 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 Yeah. 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 Wednesday the 16th. It's very interesting. I think Joe will mm -hmm. yep. enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Good. Good. So, if I remember right, we discussed this a little bit at the last regular board yes. meeting. And I can't remember. They're very similar, right? What, what you? I think that's kind of where we left right? that. Yeah. 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 Yep. I don't think yep. we changed anything. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, they, they were all discussed mm -hmm. at the last meeting. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very good. Any, any additional discussion? We would need to, yeah, so I guess we yeah, need to approve those, don't we? Any, any uh, discussion, those, Jen? Those align, um, I've been to several meetings, like this, the superintendent meeting, we had the lobbyists there, and those seem to be all, like you said, kind of hot topics. I went to Rural School Administrators of Iowa, and they do a process like this too, where you all they have you talk about each one of them, and then 
kind of go around and, and vote and we had narrowed it down to seven or eight and then we just had stickers and you could go around but those are all things one of the, the things that doesn't really affect us but is a little bit of a hot topic is um, modified allowable growth for at risk and we get five percent we at most districts get five percent but at one time you could get less for some reason and I'm not sure Brian probably knows historically but um, like for example Waukee only gets 3.5 percent of their population or their their funding towards at risk and um, they they don't have the every like all other districts it doesn't really matter what your at risk number is actually how it's computed is, is in your certified enrollment times your district cost per pupil Time five percent, but some people only get two and a half percent because, let's say, ten years ago, if you didn't, if you didn't ask for the full for five percent, maybe you asked for none. Right now, you're allowed to get none, mm -hmm. and some of them ask for two and a half percent. Well, they got locked in at two and a half percent. If you ask for five percent, you get the five percent. So they're trying to get it to where. I, to, to quote Larry Siegel, and I probably can't use this word, but if you're getting two and a half or zero percent, you're getting treated unfairly. Mm -hmm. That's not exactly what he said. <laughs> and we're locked in at five percent. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. So that you'll see, I feel like at the delegate assembly, anyone who's under five mm -hmm. is um, It'll be because there problems. really isn't, yeah. There isn't a lot of schools in the state of Iowa that are under it. I can tell you. They're under it, did you say? They're, they're, most are at 5%. Yeah, I'd okay. say probably at least two thirds of them, maybe even more than that. Okay. I would say maybe probably between 200 250 of the schools are at the 5%, but I know of two locally that are not. It's going to be a hot topic for a minority of the schools. Yes. And then also the educational savings accounts that are um, similar to vouchers. Um, that's another thing that. You know, those those are going to be open for discussion. I don't know that people are going to want those from the public side, but um, I think that will be another another topic because that's something that I know Governor Reynolds really supports. So how do we make that fair if it does pass? Uh, because we have a lot of rules and regulations that we have to follow. So if kids get to go to another school and the funding follows them, how are they going to be held accountable? Mm -hmm. So those are just some things to think about. The, they're going to probably be, the legislature is probably going to be asked to clarify the new open enrollment rules. So because mm -hmm. right now we had an um, advisory meeting for the DE and they're struggling with, they have to write administrative rules to base on the legislation. Well, the legislation is not well written. Um, it's extremely, extremely, extremely vague, and if you go by the letter of the law, it would create impossible ways to track anybody that moves from district to district. So they have some interpretation on some of it, but when it comes to SPED, it's a whole different ballgame. So now they're talking actually to ask to where the count dates are October 1st and October 31st. They're talking about blending those into one to maybe or some of these problems, but they're going to have to do some clarification on it just because mm -hmm. of what you're talking about there. It's just... Mm -hmm. yeah, it's One other thing that you might hear that's not necessarily a legislative priority right now is it's Chapter 12, and they call it Chapter 12, but it has all the rules and regulations of everything in there. So open enrollments in there, ELLs in there, and what it's it's 80, 90 pages long, and what happens is they make a change to open mm -hmm. enrollment and they just add a line. So it's could be, it's probably 30 or 40 years old, and it just you, they just keep adding things to it. So there's things in there that have <laughs> gone by the wayside, but they're still in Chapter 12, and then there's things that we do that aren't in Chapter 12. It needs, a, it needs an overhaul. Yeah. Um, and I know that they have asked for public participation for changing that, but that's something on the DE, the Department of Ed side. So that might be something when we go that just, if you hear Chapter 12, because most people don't even know what that is, it's 
it has a lot to do with lots of different funding. So it'll just be interesting to see if you hear that, if, if anyone talks about that, because um, they have asked, like they've asked superintendent groups, so we gave them our, I mean, we went through it. it and some are things just that make absolutely no sense, but mm. they're in there still, so. They need to um, kind of do what we're doing, like you take these pages and yeah, <laughs> have people yeah. go through them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is a legislature, tell me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You've got to get people to agree. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> In certain places you can hit your horses at the school. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, that would be handy. Yeah. <laughs> if I rode a horse to school. <laughs> Price again. See, you can have Okay, any more comments on the <coughs> approval of legislative priorities? If not, well, can we have a motion to approve those? So moved. So moved by Monty. Second. Second by Joni. All those in favor, aye. 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 Those opposed, no. Okay. We are to item D, the adjournment. Would anyone like to make that motion to adjourn? So moved. So moved by Ray. Second. Second by Al. Hazel. <laughs> <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Let's see if we stay here. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.